Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Manganello. I'm the administrator of the Office of School Finance with the Department of Education. Today, we're going to be doing a walkthrough of the charter school budget template for fiscal year 23, uh, which is a new requirement because of House Bill 442, which passed during the 2021 legislative session. And uh, essentially what that what that bill did, um, it did a couple things, but what it required is uh, charter schools to submit a budget on a yearly basis, similar to the way uh, uh, submit a budget to the state, similar to the way district public schools submit a budget to the state on a yearly basis. So in order to comply with that law, uh, we have a budget template, um, which is structured uh, in a similar way that the district bu budget template that goes to the state um, is structured. Um, so that is a, a new requirement that uh, uh, starts this year. Uh, on the next tab here, the budget template tab, we have some instructions on the right. Um, we'll walk through that a little bit. Uh, this is really your budget. Uh, this is the data you, whatever your budget data is going to be, um, uh, um, you can fill it out however your budget methodology is. But on the on the right there in green, we have some instructions as far as helping you just understanding uh, where these accounts might exist on your DOE 25, which would be your actuals, not your budget. Um, a budget, of course, is um, could be different than actual financial numbers, uh, which get reported in your DOE 25 when those are completed. Um, and then there's some other um, instructions along the way. Um, there's uh, um, some triggers if your budget's out of balance. We will uh, flash a warning sign to you, um, but um, we'll go through that in the next tab. And then the due date of this, this is the fiscal year 23 budget. We are currently in fiscal year 22. Uh, fiscal year 23 starts July 1, 2022. So the requirement is to have that budget to us, back to us, this, this tab here. Um, have that completed and returned back to us um, by July 1, 2022, and we'll have uh, instructions um, about getting that back to us in the, in, um, the email that you should receive. Uh, each charter school should receive an email and um, um, information about how to fill this out. The next tab is the actual budget template. So the way this works is anything yellow um, needs to be plugged in or, or, or can be plugged in. Uh, you can plug in data. Uh, you might not necessarily need to plug in data. Um, so, uh, you know, the first one here is the name of your charter school. So name of charter school. Um, you can enter uh, enter that in for us. Um, the rest of the cells are locked, so you can't change the formulas. Um, district number, um, each district um, and charter school has a number associated with it. A lot of people don't know their number, so you don't have to plug that in. We'll plug that in for you, but if you know, you know, your seven zero one or something, you might you can plug that in or you can just let us do it. Um, that's fine. Um, so the actual budget documents here, this is budgeted expenditures. So we go, um, this is the similar format in the way the districts submit their budgets to the state. Um, here's your regular programming, your accounts, uh, uh, 1100 of uh, uh, 1100 to 1199. Um, that's your regular programming accounts. Um, we break it down by elementary, middle, and high. If you don't have an elementary school, of course, this could be zero. Um, and you don't intend to have an elementary school um, approved by the state uh, uh, in fiscal year 23. You can make that zero. If you don't have a middle school, you can make it zero as well. Um, so if you just have a high school, you can focus on plugging in the programming there. And what I when I say there's instructions on the right, that's not really instructions necessarily to tell you how to build your budget. Um, you decide how you want to build your budget um, um, for fiscal year 23. But this just guides you a little bit about where on the DOE 25 could you see the actuals um, for these accounts. So I'm going to pull up a, a DOE 25. And this is telling us that page 7 and 9, 11 and 13, lines 1, account 111, um, uh, 1100. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that up. So for this particular charter school, this is next charter schools DOE 25 for 21. Um, they do not have an elementary school. They do not have a middle school. They do have a high school. Uh, so page nine, line one, account 1100. Um, these are the these are the uh, uh, actuals for 21. So if they had a particular budget methodology, if your charter school had a, a budget methodology where you look at actuals and maybe assume you know, 2% growth, and that's how you budget. You might have a totally different budget methodology, but this just sort of helps you um, sync up or, or you can reference actuals as you're going through your budget process, or you could just do it. Um, you could ignore a lot of these instructions and just build the budget how you want to build it based on these accounts 
but it is also helpful to know that, um, of course, you can leave elementary and middle blank for this particular charter because they do not have um, um, those school approvals, uh, those levels of, uh, of education. Um, and that's general funds. You also want to pick up your, um, this is going to combine general funds and special revenue uh, for budgeting purposes. Um, this is 11, 12, and 13. So page 13 is the high school. Uh, let's see what they have. Oh, so for this account, they have um, some special revenue going in for this programming. So they would also um, make sure that any budget, um, budgeted special revenue uh, funds would also get included in that uh, in this this row here. Um, so that's that's essentially the um, uh, how the process works. So build your budget and, and plug in the numbers here. So maybe they have 500 in special programming. You can just leave. You don't have to plug in zeros here. You can just leave it blank. The formula is going to auto populate, uh, but you can work your way down this um, uh, row by row. Um, you might not have any programming uh, here because this is uh, structured to be kind of standardized or similar to how um, districts do their budgeting. You might not have any of this programming. You might not have anything in, in these accounts, um, so you can just keep going. Uh, there's your 2000 series. Again, you can reference where it lives on your on your DOE 25 to, to maybe have an understanding of what the actuals are. Um, fiscal year 21 DOE 25s have been completed, so you can can look at your actuals. Um, it'd be two years from this this budget, which is 23. Um, some things might not be applicable. Um, collective bargaining uh, anticipated uh, expenses with that can get plugged in here. Um, that might not be an issue um, or a concern with your budgeting process. Um, again, if it's not an issue, if it's not applicable, you can leave it blank and just keep moving. Um, but again, you can check your DOE 25 to see if you have any historical expenditures um, in this in this in these accounts. Um, and then you can keep going, keep going. Uh, same process. You can. Go check your DOE 25 to see if you have any historical expenditures in these accounts. Um, you may or may not. You might have to plug in something for, for one of these accounts. You might not. Um, you can keep going down and going down here. Um, for these expenditures, we're not focusing on a breakdown by elementary, middle, and high. You can just put them as <clears throat> charter school wide expenditures. Um, and, and I only plugged in a few numbers there to keep the, the math easy, but I plugged in $1,500 total. I, obviously, you'll have a higher budget than that. I, I hope so. Um, <laughs> um, $1,500 is the total budget expenses, at least for, for this document. Um, and then you can move on to revenues, uh, revenue. Um, so uh, revenue is a little bit more complicated. There's a lot, a little bit more going on. There's a little more detail here. Um, well, there's a lot of detail with expenditures, but um, this one, you, it's probably more important to pay attention to the instructions here. <clears throat> um, but you want to go line by line and look at your revenue. Um, first, we break it up by uh, we break it up by local revenue, state revenue, and federal revenue. So go through your local revenue um, and look at each account. Uh, uh, 1321. Again, you can reference where it is on your DOE 25. Uh, uh, Page two, line nine, account three, 1321. You can see where uh, your historical actuals are for that revenue account. That's your regular programming revenue, tuition, uh, uh, special program tuition, uh, tuition from NHLEAs uh, for vocational programming, and other tuitions, tuition from um, individuals, outside LEAs, other. And, and, and you might not have a lot of I know charter schools, um, you can't charge tuition to um, in-state students. So this would be if you you have an out-of-state student you're charging tuition to. So you might have very little revenue in this in these particular buckets, but <clears throat> this is uh, we do want this parsed out. Uh, transportation fees, you might not have those. Um, other local revenue, this is kind of a, a catch-all here. It's grabbing the, the, the rest of the uh, local revenue that you could have. Um, state revenue, we're going to uh, plug in. You're going to have adequacy revenue. You will have adequacy revenue, so plug that in. Um, that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, lease, lease aid uh, state revenue. So if you are a program, a charter school that uh, so, uh, receives lease aid, uh, plug that here. Um, that might not be, you know, depending on um, what programming their revenues are available from the state. That may not be the only revenue account, so just keep that in mind. Um, uh, 3190, you might have another <laughs> another uh, 
revenue source in there, and then other state revenue. This would be all other state revenue um, uh, um, right here, and that would finish off your state revenue. Federal revenue, we're, we're doing um, some breakdown. We're breaking down Title I, which is uh, uh, 4520. Um, and then all other title, um, all other title grants, excluding title one is 4530. And again, DOE 25 reference right there to help you out. Um, if you are receiving a charter school startup grant, uh, <clears throat> this is gonna be uh, recorded in 4590, uh, but you might have other grants in 4590. So keep that in mind um, and, and include that in the catch all uh, other federal revenue, um, anything not already accounted for. Um, ESSER funding, uh, 4595. Um, all your ESSER uh, funding you think you'll be um, using in 23, you can budget that here. Um, again, all other federal revenue, you can buck th buck it there. <clears throat> and then we've got other revenue, these accounts, um, if you have anything in that column. And so let's go ahead and put in adequacy. Let's say we put in 1,500 in adequacy. We have 1,500 in expenditures, 1,500 in adequacy. So we have a surplus statement down here. Say if we start off with $0, um, we have a, a, a balance of zero. Um, so we, we, we have 1,500 revenue, 1,500 expenditures, balances out. Um, this is the, the, the bottom of the, the budget document where you can plug in your starting balance. Um, again, this is where it lives on your DOE 25. Um, the 21 DOE 25 is not gonna be your starting balance. You're gonna have to predict what your 22 DOE 25 is going to have on page 19, line eight. <laughs> Uh, where you think you're going to end up um, come June 30th. Um, that's going to be your starting balance. So you might have um, you know, close the year with $100 in the $100 in the bank. Um, um, that's your starting balance. And then if you have a, a, a zero budget, uh, net neutral budget there, um, you would end up with an ending balance of $100. Um, but this is just um, giving you a guideline of where to Grab that number. You also want to consider audit adjustments. Um, sometimes your ending balance is different um, as you're working your budget. Uh, it might be different than what you report on your DOE 25 if your DOE 25 is not audited. So <clears throat> a couple things to think about is if you were budgeting a couple of warning signs here or if your revenue was only going to come in at $1,000. We just have a couple warnings here if you are running uh, uh, an operational deficit. Of course, you're allowed to run an operational deficit. You're allowed to budget this. You're, you have um, the the state is only mandating you complete this budget form. You're allowed to budget, however, however um, uh, uh, you see fit. Um, this is it's your budget. Uh, but if you were, you know, planning on running an operational deficit, where just a little warning sign shows up that says, you know, an operational debt long term uh, uh, operational deficit is not sustainable in the long term, and also a, a warning here that. Um, your cash flow is your your ending balance is negative. So when you think about ending the year in a negative balance, that's probably going to create some cash flow issues. Um, I know a lot of this is common sense, but just gives you a warning that maybe you want to go up here and look at your expenditures. Okay, you know if we are only getting a thousand dollars, maybe we um, have to uh, <coughs> reduce expenditures in our budget. Um, and then we go. The warning signs have been cleared. So this is the budget template. This is what has to be completed by July 1, 2022. Uh, you can reach out to uh, the Office of School Finance. Um, at um, You can reach call me at 271-0073 or my cell at 731-6514. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.